Hello and welcome to part four of the Legio Titanicus Warbringer Nemesis Titan. Hope you're enjoying the build guide so far. Again, I must um, emphasize that these videos are purely aimed at everyone that has a Nemesis Titan or is thinking about getting one. If you've already got one and uh, you see a few of my uh, techniques and things that you did differently, then please do put it in the comments below. Uh, but as this is my first time with a Nemesis Titan, uh, this is all uncharted territory uh, for me. So uh, I've moved on a little bit, somewhat. <laughs> uh, this is usually what happens. I get, I do get carried away, I get blown away, carried away. Um, now I have glued these uh, shins or the lower leg um, to the the feet and themselves. This is the right one, this is the left one. All the toes are the same, I think, except for the front toes, which are a bit longer. Uh, I think I mentioned that before. What I've done is I've, I've glued the knees in place as well and the, um, and the thigh to lower leg uh, pistons as well. Um, I was thinking about leaving them off, but then I thought, nah, there's, I'm gonna be able to get in there and, and paint those at least. And plus it gives it a bit more, say, rigidity uh, because I don't think I glued these bits with the resin glue. I think I just did that with the super glue, whereas the, the base I glued with the resin and they are solid as. That is gonna withstand any weight I, I put on there, which is what I uh, was aiming to do anyway. Of course, yeah, you can you can pin it. You can pin the whole thing if you, if you really wish, uh, but I've never had any of the legs come off any of my Titans before, uh, but then again, I haven't thrown them around the room or uh, in the back of a, a car or anything like that. Um, and what I've done is, is I've gone for the uh, upright uh, position of the legs to my detriment. And uh, I'll, I'll discuss that uh, right now. So uh, unfortunately, um, the way the, the legs are uh, created with this particular Titan, which is to totally different to the uh, Reaver, the Warhound specifically, uh, and the Warlord. The Warlord's uh, thighs and legs, um, they're, they're pretty wide. Uh, you've got uh, a good length there of these of, of the hip joints uh, on the Warlord, uh, whereas this one seems to have a very, very narrow gait. Uh, I'm not sure why, I think these should be longer, but the, what I've now discovered, uh, again, which is pretty disappointing, is that when I put the uh, hip joint in there, it's not, I'm not gonna be able to, to have it um, stud like that uh, all the way. Like, I'm not gonna be able to have these, uh, the, the hip joints themselves lock all the way into that, that joint. Um, they won't be able to go all the way in. If I was to put them all the way in, look how small the hips are. Now I could kind of get away with posing it like that with one foot off the, off the ground a little bit, but then I probably might have to break one of these toes off and, um, and reposition it. And also it's gonna look a bit odd with both legs uh, fully uh, straightened. Likewise, I can't really get away with posing it like that. So it's on a bit of a, a wobble. I have been thinking about uh, pulling these out a little bit so that they're resting. That might be an option because I can kind of get away with that and um, these will still uh, go in. These will sort of still go in and uh, you know not, not cause too much of an issue in terms of the length of these uh, rods. Um, well, that one may be an issue. But it, it's possible, it is possible, you know, to, to get away with it and, and to do it uh, like so with that, with that length. Um, I'm still thinking about what to do because, yeah, it's disappointing. And it really, it, it basically means that this model, you can't have it, you know, stood on both legs completely upright uh, with, the, with the legs locked out. Um, you have to have it moving forward. Or if you are gonna go for it kind of bracing, you're gonna have to go uh, like, like it shows on, on the book there. Um, with the, the legs at an angle. So that's a bit disappointing to have it like that, but uh, both of the legs having to uh, be, be at that angle. Another thing I was thinking of is just breaking one of these legs, like at the base, but that resin is pretty, pretty strong stuff. And I may actually risk um, breaking off uh, part of this foot assembly 
which would be very, very difficult to uh, repair. It wouldn't be too difficult to hide because as you can see, you know, they, they go on there and, and all the rest of it. So that's my, my two options right now. So I'm leaving you on a bit of a cliff, cliffhanger for the next part of this video though, uh, just to decide what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a decision today whether I'm gonna break one of these um, lower legs off uh, or just have the hips sit on it. Because once these are in as well, and they're supporting it and and I've already sort of tested it in terms of putting pressure on on this even if these aren't all the way in and with that resin glue as well I think it, it is possible um, to have it sort of resting on it rather than all the way in uh, you know and like I say these supports will will help I mean you get 12 of these um, hip piston supports anyway which is more than enough I mean if you only got uh, sort of eight or um, six, then, you know, six is, I think the Warhammer's got six, uh, then yeah, I, I wouldn't be that comfortable. But, but, but because you get a whopping 12 of these pistons, that should be enough. And with the this resting on there, and actually the ridges themselves hook onto these piston pieces as well. They sit really, really well. So I might opt to do that uh, rather than put it in the middle and all the way in. Uh, because if I do that, I'm now either going to have to break one of these legs um, or break a couple of feet um, to have it. It's going to be a bit of a wonk if I do that, but we'll see um, as, as we go on. And uh, you'll find out what I do in this next part of the video. So join me in that. Okay, so the dilemma is somewhat averted and I've gone forward a few more steps uh, with, with the process. Now I wasn't really prepared to break either of these two uh, ankle joints. Um, if you remember in the, the, the last part of this video, uh, both of the legs were upright and uh, I was gonna have a problem with uh, using the full length of the, the hips uh, there while having both of the legs upright. So what I've done is I've um, been able to all I needed to do was literally just break one of these toes, uh, and it was this back toe, off, and then angle the leg. Um, yes, the leg is still straight, but that's kind of like it it has um, just pulled its foot up um, from, from being in a uh, sort of upright um, position. It's just pulled its leg up. So by breaking this toe off and um, bending it, so it's, it's gives the whole model a, a very supportive point to, to rest on. I can still utilize some of the strength of the legs to support the whole model. Now, another thing that you will notice is I've left these uh, toes um, kind of uh, level. And there's a reason that I've done that. In the Reaver, I didn't do that because the toes are smaller and um, the knee is bent and the leg is actually higher in and further along in the movement for, in the uh, movement of it. Whereas this, I didn't want these toes to be flapping down. I didn't want them to be um, curved, uh, you know, pointing downwards because to me that just seems like. Um, the corners of them would catch on, on anything, on like a little bit of rubble or whatever. I mean, it's a Titan, it's not gonna catch. But um, for me to see, uh, you know, this design uh, uh, floor, I guess, of the, the corners of these toes scraping furrows along the floor as it walks, um, you know, d didn't sit well with me at all. Um, so I've gone uh, against that and I've left them at sort of a level position um, just demonstrating that the Titan has just taken its foot off. However, the back toe, I have put it at a slight um, uh, bend. Now, I've put it at more of a bend than I possibly should have done. Uh, I, I'm, I think it could have been more level but I've put the angle at its kind of fullest, um, as, as far low as I, I wanted it to, to go. Um, but in hindsight, I maybe should have sort of leveled that off. Uh, but for me, that would have looked uh, like it was kind of floating rather than dropping. And um, I'm looking at, at this in terms of uh, the, the physics and the um, mechanical makeup of it in terms of the computer is, um, opting to keep these toes at a at a level, um, but opting for this toe to, to be dropped down just in case it has to go backwards for, for some reason. It's it's the you know its toe is is closer to the ground so it's ready to to, to lean back and then fire that quake cannon. 
I always like to have a bit of a story like this in terms of poses and legs and you know all the rest of it uh, in terms of all my models and um, what that also means is that uh, although its left leg is um, you know more forward it is still kind of upright um, whereas the Warlord Titan uh, both of the legs are um, bent in almost bracing position um, whereas this is Whereas this is the first Titan I've done with one leg completely, uh, you know, erect. The Reva Titan has both of the legs, um, you know, in motion at angles. And although I originally wanted to have this Titan with its legs, you know, side by side, uh, that's just not possible. There's no way you can do that, um, given the the shortness of these uh, the hip joints. Um, the, the the feet themselves are just too wide and too big and supportive to allow that to happen. Um, unless you unless you bend unless you bend them at the ankle joints um, sufficiently. But I'm still happy with some kind of uh, motion uh, in this Titan. Um, it's actually worked out for the best. And this is sometimes what happens when you. Um, when you go through the stages of building a, a big model like this. Uh, so as well as just breaking one toe, uh, as well as just breaking the front toe and uh, you know the rear toe and, and repositioning them, I then uh, set about uh, gluing the hip joints into the, the sockets of the, uh, the thighs. And um, yeah, that was a, a bit of a pain. I used the, um, the resin glue, uh, this stuff, the dual um, kit, um, and you can pin it, you can drill a hole in each hip joint all the way through to the uh, the middle and back again. I never have, I've never pinned uh, any of my models, the Warlord Titan's not pinned. I don't have any issues with them suddenly just crumpling uh, into pieces. I've never had that issue. Um, but still, after you've kind of put those in a position, it's really difficult to sit there and just keep them connected or even use some kind of grip to keep them connected. Uh, you really, I used a, um, a spirit level, this is vital, I think I put this on one of the start of the videos, um, to measure that the, the hips are uh, you know, level, and they're as level as I kind of accepted them to, to be. Um, the, the good thing about this kit compared to the Reaver and the Warlord is the hip uh, torso assembly mounting point. It's really, really good um, that Will's designed this. So you've got this piece here, which is a plug and socket. You, you know, there's a cutout there to put a magnet if you really wanted to put a rod magnet in. Um, I, I might do. Um, there, there is an option to do that. Uh, however, if you, if you do do that, um, you're going to be boring into this um, nipple. And that nipple does ha does serve a function. So here's torso I made earlier, um, and what happens is the nipple goes into this hole, and then you can glue it, whichever sort of you can glue it like that, you can glue it like that. You, you know, you've you've got a, a bit of a range of movement. But what's important is whichever way you glue it, it, it allows you to um, correct the uh, any kind of. Uh, error you've had in your um, spirit level at this point and then glue it in place and once that's glue you can then just pop the torso off this uh, torso mount system which is really really cool and it also means you don't need to magnetize it if you don't don't have to um, so it's such a step up from the, the Warlord Titan um, but I do feel that the the knees and the legs and the hips uh, are a step down from the uh, Warlord, uh, but everything else so far is, has been uh, an improvement. Another tricky thing were these these cables, um, just based on the way your, your legs are. If you don't separate your legs at all, you're going to have uh, areas where uh, you can see that they're, they're not going to join, which is still fine. Even if you use a hairdryer and um, bend them into pleat them and bend them into place, you're going to have those issues. Uh, these pistons were an absolute pain, especially these two. Um, the shorter you get, because you have to snip parts out. And um, I would strongly suggest you do these parts as the hip um, joints are, are, you know, still malleable, still, you know, poseable. Um, so you can just slightly separate them a little bit and, and squeeze these piston joints in. Unlike the, the Warlord Titan where all of those pistons are separate and you can get, get, in, get in there on them because uh, those, they, they actually mount onto the, the ring of the, the hips which is exposed uh, and then they go into the hole whereas these have to go in around the hip and then in a hole as well. It's going to be very tricky to paint them and then affix them uh, once this whole hip 
assembly is is complete the, trickier than the warlord titan um, i did that after i painted it um for, for that titan and that was fine but this one i'd strongly suggest you do that that does suck that you're not going to be able to get into painting the the uh, you know the the pistons themselves and um the the hip joint you could paint that a different sort of color but it's it's one of the the trade-offs of having this whole assembly and um, built at least i've left these uh, exposed so i can get some detail on there before i put the the armor plates on anyway i just wanted to show you um the next sort of stage of the of the legs um pretty much complete as you can see i have um gone a couple of steps further um and um rather than record all the you know errors and things i had with putting these together and, and measuring them and um, one thing i will say is, is i've of course gone a bit further with this uh, torso mount um what i've done is i've attached the um bolt cannons smaller bolt cannons i uh, you know you, you can leave them uh unsuper glued in there uh, but they will be very loose even if you heat uh the um attachments there and squeeze squeeze the uh, bolt cannon in they're still going to be loose uh, but you can glue them to this top mount and then at least you can rotate them and that's for all three of them even this tail mounted one uh, the power plant exhaust vents um, uh, are quite tricky to to go on as you can see i've used a lot of green stuff in places there are gaps i've used green stuff here as well and um, it's worth doing all of this before you put the uh, top uh, mount on which is uh, this, this top level. So this I've put the void shield generators um, glued onto this, this top piece here. That's all ready to go. I have decided that I'm gonna glue all of this uh, together, like so, um, which will be fine. But I've decided against uh, gluing this piece here onto there because I want to get at this detail here on the um, on the walkway and uh, you just can't get at that detail and dry brush it efficiently if you've got this in in the way and um, because you're going to be messing up the inside of this bit um, and you know you can still see a few air bubbles here and there which I need to go over um, and I'll obviously do that before I um, you know get ready to spray it but um, once I've glued this onto the top uh, I've also found out that I can um, then glue these shoulders uh, on there and what I will do after I've glued these shoulders and all that is is done that's pretty much it for this top top area uh, other than um, drilling some holes and putting some magnets in here for the void shields um, which will just magnetize in exactly the same as the Warlord Titan. What I'll also do is I will be making these guns very soon. Uh, all I need to do is just clean up the barrels and, and bend the barrels correctly and then glue them into their turrets. And pretty much, uh, I'm not going to glue these, I am going to magnetise them because there may be other different uh, weapons coming uh, for these instead. But I will uh, magnetise these onto the uh, shoulders and then uh, that gives me a bit of... They won't sit there loose like so, uh, but they will um, have a bit of resistance with the magnets in and that will aid um, keeping them in as well. Anyway. That's it for, for this kind of leg update body um, video. What I'll do in the next video is um, show you uh, the next progress in gluing these shoulders and things on um, and some steps in the magnetization process. And it will also be time uh, to start um, building the, uh, the three uh, main weapons and the head, uh, which will be for me, uh, the Reaver uh, Volcano Cannons and the Quake Cannon. And of course the Warbringer's head and um, then we're pretty much done after after that i've uh, all the armor pieces are sanded and ready and cleaned up i will be going through the magnetization of the uh, arm weapons as well uh, in the next video so if you have enjoyed this video and you're enjoying this uh, series the best way to support the channel is by buying all of your uh, warhammer goodness from element games using the affiliate link below uh, and if you can't buy anything from there i do have a patreon as well uh, to help support the channel thank you ever so much for joining me today thank you for watching the emperor protects